Hey guys, I thought I'd just make a quick tutorial on how to create a VLAN using the OpenWRT software. Uh, this is specifically the newer DSA infrastructure they're using. Um, I couldn't find a whole lot of videos on how to do something like this, so I thought I'd save some of y'all the headache. Now, OpenWRT does a weird thing where a physical port will have to be assigned when using a VLAN. If you want to just use wireless, you'll still have to assign it to a physical port. Um, so in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to just assign that physical port and it'll be able to be utilized if you want to connect devices that you don't trust to that port and to connect wireless devices to it as well. So the first thing you'll do is go to status and overview. And you'll scroll down and here you'll see your physical port status. And if your router doesn't have specific numbers on the back that list the ports, uh, what you'll want to do is just connect an Ethernet cable to the back of one of the ports you want to choose. And um, I'm just going to connect it to my computer here. And as you can see, LAN 4 came up. Uh, so this is what we're going to use for our VLAN. So I'm going to disconnect that. And you'll scroll back up and go to Network and Interfaces. You'll go to Devices, and we're going to select a specific device that we're going to use for our VLAN. So you'll go to Add Device Configuration. We're going to change this from Network Device to our VLAN 802.1Q. And for our base device, we're going to choose that LAN 4, which is our physical port LAN 4. And for the VLAN ID, I'm just going to name that 4 as well to match the physical port 4. And we'll save. Now we'll also want to make a bridge for this device as well. So we'll go back to add device configuration, change this to bridge device, and device name, we'll just name this VR VLAN for bridge VLAN. And for bridge ports, we want to go ahead and assign that to the LAN 4.4 that it created for us. And we'll save that. Now one last thing we have to do on here is unassign the physical port 4 because currently it is assigned to our regular LAN. Um, so we definitely want to segment our traffic from our VLAN from our LAN. So we'll configure our bridge LAN and we want to disassociate LAN 4 and save. And we'll save and apply. Then we'll go to interfaces and we're going to want to create an interface for our VLAN. So for this, we'll just name it VLAN. We want to change this to static address and we want to choose that bridge VLAN that we created. Now we'll scroll down and for our IPv4 address, um, I'm just going to choose the 192.168.4.1 subnet. So and our subnet mask is going to be 255.255.255.0. And we'll want to go to DHCP server and set this up for our specific subnet. And we'll save. Then we'll save and apply. And next we will set up our firewall rules. Um, so we're going to go ahead and change over to firewall. So that will be network firewall. All right, so on the firewall zone settings, we're going to want to go ahead and create a rule that's going to allow traffic outbound from the VLAN to the WAN. So we'll go to add and unname zone. We're just going to name this VLAN and we'll want to reject, accept, and reject traffic on that. And we'll want to go ahead and check masquerading and MSS clamping. And covered networks, we're going to go ahead and choose our interface VLAN. 
and allow forward to destination zone WAN, WAN and six. We'll save that. Save and apply. Next, we'll want to go to traffic rules. We're going to create a rule down here. And we're going to want to go ahead and allow a DHCP server to the VLAN. So we'll go ahead and name this allow DHCP VLAN. Source zone is going to be the interface VLAN and destination zone. We're going to choose this device and destination port. We're going to choose 67 and 68 for our DHCP. And we want to accept that traffic. And save and apply. And that is going to be it for right now for the firewall traffic rules. All right, for our wireless SSID, um, we're going to go ahead and create one for the VLAN. So as you can see, I already have one set up here. This is my trusted network. Um, this is not the VLAN. Um, I've had to set this up under 802.11 BGN. I've tried doing it under ACN, but for whatever reason, I have uh, network issues on that one. Um, so I generally do it under this one here. So I'll go ahead and create this by choosing add. And we're going to leave the mode and the channel the same. You can mess with some of these settings, but we'll just leave that by default right now. For our ESSID, we're just going to name this um, test VLAN for right now. And mode, we're going to just leave that as access point. Our network, we're going to choose our VLAN interface again. We'll want to go to wireless security. And from here, as you can see, no encryption. That's pretty bad. We will change this to WPA2 pre-shared key. Um, I've tried WPA3 SAE as well. Um, for whatever reason, my devices have issues connecting with this. It would be nice to use, but um, just for this sake, we'll choose WPA2. I know there's no issues with this one. And as for our key, we'll just name this um, Andrew VLAN. Andrew. We'll leave those other settings as default there as well. And once we save this, we'll go ahead and save and apply. So as you can see, our SSID is up. Um, you may not be able to connect to it just yet. Um, so what I like to do is just restart the router. So you'll go into uh, system and uh, it'll be reboot right here. And we'll just let this reboot. Okay, so once you reboot the router and uh, log back into the router interface here, um, we are still on the trusted network. So we can go ahead and switch over to the newly created VLAN that we have here so mine would be the test VLAN and we are connected and as you can see everything turned to a question mark so that is a good sign since we are on the 1.1 subnet so we're seeing a little bit of connection issues which is a good sign we can go ahead and restart this browser page and obviously we can't connect to the router interface anymore since we are on that different subnet and we can go ahead and verify this as well uh, so if i run ip config looks like our dhcp server is giving us a 4.185 address so that is on our proper subnet that we created and uh, we can go ahead and test internet connection as well so just pink one eight there Looks like we're getting some packets back. And we can even do a Google search, and that looks perfect. Okay, so we know that we have internet connection, and we know that we have a DHCP lease for our four subnet. Um, 
but we can go ahead and test this with command prompt if this is properly segmented. Uh, we can try pinging 192.168.11, which is our router interface. So that's a good sign. Um, basically, that is the firewall saying that the destination port is unreachable because our firewall rules are in place, right? But we can go even further into this to make sure this is properly segmented. Uh, so what I did was I connected a Raspberry Pi uh, with um, Linux installed and Nmap. So that's connected on the 4 subnet. So as you can see, my IP address here is uh, 192.168.4.154. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do a Nmap scan on the dot one subnet, and we're going to see if anything comes up. So we'll go ahead and run Nmap, and we'll just do tech SN for 192.168.1.0 for the 24 cider. And uh, we're going to go ahead and see if we can do any sort of active reconnaissance on that dot one subnet, see if anything comes back. Okay, that took a minute, but um, as you can see, we are seeing devices that are coming up in our Nmap scan. So that 192.168.11, that is our router interface. And if we scroll down, not seeing anything yet. And here we do see 192.168.1.218, which is my iPhone. So this is not properly segmented. If we are on the 4 subnet and we're scanning devices that are on the 1. Um, so this goes back to those couple of firewall rules that I left out. So we're going to go back to our router interface and we'll go ahead and get logged into that. Okay, so the reason why I left out a couple of those firewall rules was to kind of demonstrate what improper VLAN implementation looks like. So we obviously had some sort of DNS leakage, and uh, the way we can resolve that is by implementing some new firewall rules. So we'll go back to the firewall settings here and go to traffic rules, and we'll scroll down and add. We'll name this deny VLAN DNS. And source zone is going to be VLAN. And destination zone is going to be this device. And destination port will be 53. We're going to reject the traffic. And this will make sense in a moment because we're going to assign a static address for DNS for a secure DNS. Um, that way we're not resolving from the router itself and thus causing um, DNS leakage here. So we'll go ahead and save that. And we'll also want to do this for LAN. So we're going to go ahead and make a new one. It'll be called deny LAN DNS. Source zone is going to be LAN to this device. And please make sure to assign the destination port 53. If you leave this blank and save the rule, you will block your router. And um, you will have to do a factory reset, uh, which I unfortunately made the mistake of doing, which wasn't fun. And that looks good. We'll go ahead and save and apply. And now we'll go ahead and make the static DNS uh, reservations for these. All right, so we'll go to network, interfaces, and interface VLAN, we'll go ahead and start off there. And we'll go to advanced settings, or sorry, DHCP server, advanced settings, and options. It already listed out here for us. Uh, obviously it says six, which designates uh, different DNS servers. So we'll do six comma and then we'll choose the secure dns or whatever dns server you want to use so i'm going to use a secure dns uh, which is cloudflare so it'll be one 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 and then a backup dns secure server so i'll do quad nine so it'll look like that 
And another thing to check as well, uh, with OpenWRT, it sometimes has IPv6 leakage. So if you were to perform an NS lookup after even going through with these uh, static DNS resolutions, uh, sometimes it does leak IPv6 traffic. So I went ahead and disabled everything. Now, if you play older online games, sometimes they need Chirito tunneling, which is basically a translation from IPv6 to IPv4. So you may encounter some issues with that. But um, for right now, I just disabled it just to uh, make sure everything's secure here. And we'll save this. And we'll do the same thing for LAN as well. All right, and that should be the last of what we need to do for the configuration part. Now we'll go ahead and test with our MMAP scan, and everything should be properly segmented by now. All right, back on overview. If I scroll down, um, I see that my iPhone is on the secure subnet, and my Raspberry Pi is on the uh, VLAN. So I'll go ahead and switch over and connect to that Raspberry Pi so we can do that MMAP scan. And I'll go ahead and SSH into that. And then I'll go ahead and do that in-map scan. on the whole secure network, see if anything comes back. All right, so the MAP scan came back. Um, so that ping sweep we did, um, definitely know that there's something on 1.1 one one because that's our router interface, nothing there. Also know that there's something on 2.18 because that's my iPhone, as seen earlier. And as we can see, nothing there. And then we can also do a more aggressive uh, NMAP scan. So if we wanted to do a script reverse um, NMAP scan, we just do sudo NMAP SV SC. And yeah, as you can see, um, this is the address that my iPhone is on, on that secure um, segmented network. As you can see, it says that all 1,000 ports on that 218 endpoint are closed. So this is a properly segmented network.